Did you miss your deadline to renew your Medicaid coverage? You can still send your completed annual review form to Healthy Connections Medicaid. You may be assigned to another health plan, but you can ask to come back to First Choice within 60 days of renewed Medicaid eligibility. It's your family. It's your choice. First Choice is the right choice. Renew and choose us. Visit selecthealthofsc.com slash renew to learn more. Lucky Land Casino, asking people what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? Lucky? In line at the deli, I guess? Aha, in my dentist's office. More than once, actually. Do I have to say? Yes, you do. In the car before my kid's PTA meeting. Really? Yes. Excuse me, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? I never win and tell. Well, there you have it. You can get lucky anywhere, playing at LuckyLandSlots.com. Play for free right now. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Shopping has been moving good. Just picked up a head of lettuce for Conway Tweedy. And a tiny little blue ribbon on it, little holly, little uh, red velvet on it. He's going to love it. <laughs> He'll eat the ribbon, too. But uh, outside of that, it's moving along. Conway Tweedy loves that lettuce. He gets all lettuce up on a Friday night. Falls over in his cage. You see? <laughs> I, I can't help it. You know, I got a soft spot in my head for guinea pigs. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hello, Test. Hello, Test. Hello, Test. Do you mind if I sing the only verse that I know of a Christmas carol, please, Ed, if you will? A host with Austin, Charlie, Walla Walla Wash, and Kalamazoo. Norman's freezing on the trolley. Da 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 Hey, hold it there, hold it there, hold it there. Is does anybody have the rest of the lyrics to that? Deck the halls with Boston Charlie, Walla Walla Wash, and Kalamazoo. Norman's freezing on the trolley. Da 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 da. I could sing for you. That's uh, Walt Kelly wrote that, right? That's a famous pogo thing. Deck the halls with Boston Charlie. Walla Walla Wash and Kalamazoo. Norman's freezing on the trolley. Oh, listen, uh, for those of you who are uh, hung up on facts, uh, incidental trivia type stuff, we have a bit of information here. If uh, you're having Christmas card problems, and I, I just uh, don't have that problem. I, I gave up sending any type of Christmas card some time ago. I don't. I'm me and the Ebenezer Stooge. We just walk around and say, bah, humbug. Yeah, well, it's not that I'm against Christmas. It's just I'm a tight varmint. I mean, I, I walk around, I don't send Christmas cards. And for the benefit of those of you who are, you know, hung up on facts, Christmas cards, the first Christmas card was engraved by Louis Prang at Roxbury, Mass. When do you think the first Christmas card was sold? Ever. What would you guess? 1967, would you say? Uh, I mean, let's face it, uh, nobody has a memory that goes past, at the very outside, 1965, in this year. Nobody nobody wants to concede. 
remember anything. Because the more you admit you remember, the more you concede the time has passed in your life. If you could possibly arrange it so you couldn't remember yesterday, you would have been born full-blown this morning. And everyone could see you're the youngest guy, and they sit around there, oh, Henry's, flipping for the martinis. But so, you know. <laughs> but uh, seriously, friends, the first Christmas card was engraved by Louis Prang, which is an unfortunate name, at Roxbury, Mass., in 1874. 1874, for export to England. Uh, they did not sell them here in America in those days. They were only sold, they came back to America then and were sold to the American trade the following year in 1875. Louis tried them out on the English marks. They went over pretty good. That was back in the days 1874. That was when uh, Charles Dickens was writing. You know, Dickens, he's the guy that, that created the greatest the Christmas character of them all outside of... Uh, Santa Claus. That would have to be Ebenezer Stooge, wouldn't it? Yeah, and his uh, partner, uh, uh, Barley. What was the first name of, uh, of his partner? Anybody know the first name? Remember Barley walking around with it, rattling his chains? He was a ghost. Don't you remember that? Sure. Well, what, uh, what was his first name? He had a first name. And what was the name of, of Ebenezer Stooge's sister? Aha! There's a piece of Christmas trivia. Ah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, that's right. It's fine. Thank you. That's right. Mr. Barley has just come in with a piece of mincemeat pie here. So a celebration goes on continuously here. You know, the one thing that makes sets New York apart from all the rest of the country is that it begins, in, uh, this is a corporate uh, celebration, it begins celebrating in its offices, oh, I would say, late in October. Uh, the celebration for the holidays begin. They will not peter out until sometime around the middle of March. And uh, <laughs> in the meantime, of course, the bottles are collecting in the bottom of the air shaft. We get 12 million Seagram Benchmark bourbon bottles out there. You know, oh, it's just a great time. And uh, we're getting those uh, lyrics, though. So in just a moment, we'll we'll uh, sing those carols for you. You know, this is our last show before uh, before Christmas. You know, it's Friday, and. Uh, the Christmas spirit is upon us, and as, as you probably know, this slob art has just marched to the just marched out to the floor this year uh, here on uh, on Park Avenue. There's a big brouhaha, you know, in New York. There's this bank put up these gigantic tin Christmas trees. That's a magnificent example of slob art. Yeah, on Park Avenue, yeah, up to 53rd, they got these giant tin Christmas trees lit, lit up with very bright white light bulbs. And they stretch about four stories high. They're enormous. And what is the crowning touch of slobism that in, in, in place of the star of Bethlehem on top of the Christmas tree, they have put their corporate emblem on the top? <laughs> yes, indeed. That, that, that is the mark of the true slob. <laughs> Hi, George. Uh, yes, indeed. You can often, well, when you work in a company long enough, you can often confuse the divinity for the boss. And in some cases, they're definitely interchangeable. Ed, do you have that queued up there again? Let's try it again. Here, let's try it. Here we go. Once again. The Hulk with Boston Charlie, Walla Walla Wash and Kalamazoo. Norman freezing on the trolley, smaller dollar cauliflower allegory. Don't we know Aunt Barrel, Lullaby, Lily Boy, Louie the Lou, Trolley Molly, Don't Love Harold, Bula Bula, Pensacola, Hullab... Uh-oh, we got off on that one. <laughs> that's great. I like that. That's one of my favorites. Yeah, that's good, except I got kind of off on the end there, but that, that's uh, just typical of my lack of general talent. You know, because... <clears throat> Let's try it again. The deck us all with Boston, Charlie, Walla Walla Wash, and Kalamazoo. Nora's freezing on the trolley, Swaller Dollar, Cauliflower, Allegaroo. Don't we know our Cherbero, Lullaby, Lily Boy, Louie the Lou. Trolley Molly, don't love Harold, Bula Bula, Pensacola, Hullabaloo. Yeah, it's very tender. I, I like uh, the sentiment expressed there. And uh, as you know, sentiment is running rampant this year, and particularly in the commercial world. We see right here, right off the bat, the good old General Tire people are just out there 
throwing leaves and holly and mistletoe all around. And, of course, they kind of would like to have you buy about maybe 15 or 20 sets of their general dual steel radial tires. Give them out for gifts and favors at parties and all that sort of thing. Kind of nice. They're the first polyester and steel radial tire delivered to Detroit. And you know they know so much in Detroit for original equipment. So uh, why don't you try those new fantastic dual steel radio from General Tire. They come in Christmas green with a lovely holly berry trim. And they're nice. And by the way, in Brooklyn, you can see Steve at the Gannon Tire Company. He's the one that's dressed like Santa down there. He's waiting in the driveway with his beard hanging down. And he's got his tire gauge in his hand. 6502 Bay Parkway in Brooklyn. Let's see. Do you have another goodie, Eddie? Yes. I know you would. Hey, Mama. Oh, no. It's, it's alive. I'm Mama Leone. I got a live I'm Mama Leone. Can I do it, please? Mama Leone. Yes, eating at Mama Leone's restaurant is a gay festive occasion any time, but at the Christmas time, well, the place is simply bubbling over with all the music and the laughing and the waiters bustling about. With still another dish in Mama's endless traditional Christmas dinner. It's the perfect place to take the family on Christmas Day. It's a pasta. You get a complete dinner for only seven ninety five. So make your reservations now for Mama's Christmas Day festivities. To Mama Leone at 239 West to 48th Street. The phone number is JU6. I repeat, JU6-5151. This commercial will self-destruct in five seconds. It doesn't kill us all. And back the halls with Boston Charlie. You notice I'm in a general good mood tonight? Hey, listen, I have another offer I'd like to make. Since it is the last, uh, you know, it's the Christmas, it's the last uh, show we're going to do before Christmas time. Of course, we will be on Christmas Eve, that's a fact. Uh, but I, I assume none of you will be hearing that. Oh, no, they don't hear that. Well, Christmas Day, uh, all right, so all right. It, I won't be on Sunday night. It, everybody's so technical around here. But I will be on Monday, as usual. You know, death and taxes and radio keeps going right on. Ain't nobody, <laughs> ain't nobody get off. But they will be here at Christmas. And uh, since the Christmas Eve will have passed, you will have already had a rotten Christmas, and the recriminations will have slowly died down, and the regret, and all the rest of it. Uh, I, uh, I, I've decided to do something. I've never done it. Let's start a tradition right now. We'll start a tradition. Beginning right now, I think tonight, I would like to say a Merry Christmas to a listener. He'll be a surrogate listener, an ombudsman, you know. He will be every listener. And I would like to personally at this point say Merry Christmas to a symbolic listener who will step forth, rise above the mire and the muck of listenerdom, and call us on the phone. Any listener who will, who will volunteer to do that will we'll, we'll, we'll say Merry Christmas on the phone, on the air to that listener, and for all listeners. Okay, now call. We'll wait. Any listener want to stand up and, and to be the be the one to take it for all of them. I mean, it's no age, sex, race, nothing barriers. Just any listener, anybody that's got a little bit more than a tin foil ear, right? Oh, take the halls with Boston. Hey, one more thing too before we go any further. One more thing. Yes, sir. We've been getting all kinds of reports from all over town. And they've been shipping them out all over town, and a lot of people have been writing and calling and everything else about my new book, The Parari in the Bedroom, a mysterious, sneaky book that, by the way, has a self-destruct binding that'll blow your uncle's eyebrows right off his ears around February. So if you've been looking for the book, Ferrari, The Ferrari in the Bedroom, published by Dodd Mead, I have just gotten a note from the publisher that they shipped out a whole more, a whole nine more carloads around town. So... The Ferrari in the Bedroom, my newest epic, which, by the way, will be reviewed publicly the 5th of January, that's the pub date, will be in, is now, again, I repeat, is in all the bookstores all over the country. In this area, you know, they're all of the major bookstores, the H Street Bookstore, Womrath, uh, A&S, Wanamaker, Bloomingdale's, uh, Macy's, Gimbel's, the whole smooth, Corvettes, all of them. You go in and you say, I want the Ferrari in the Bedroom by Gene Shepard, published by Dodd Mead, and you'll start the great rush. The great rush past the uh, Snoopy counter. Now, this is WOR, New York. 
course. What was that? She just put up a sign that said eight. What? What? Oh, well, wait a minute. We're, 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 I'm not going to choose the first one that calls. It's just we're going to see what the... Where, you, you, is that okay? You think that's a goodie? All right. Here we've got a symbolic listener. Put, put up your... No, no, is it eight or nine, hon? Eight. All right. Let's see the symbolic... Li- hello. Oh, hello. I don't know how you got chose, but... The, uh-huh? <laughs> well, that's no reason. <laughs> Some people just sit out there with their finger on the phone button, you know? Uh, hello, listener. You are a symbolic listener. All right, would you please uh, put this... Uh, would you call it, uh, Edward, please? Uh, uh, oh, can you do it? Yeah, hello, listener. Yeah. Uh, you are a symbolic listener, right? Right. Does it matter that I'm Jewish? No, it does not at all. Of course not. I said, no, there are no boundaries whatsoever. Now, the point is, you are a symbolic listener, correct? Right. And you represent whom? I represent the human race. That's right, everybody. And uh, you're standing up now in the, in uh, in your room there in front of the radio, right? That's right. And you're standing at attention? Yes, with a flag, too. Very good. Now, would you please look directly at the voice coil of your radio? Right. Right. All right, now, I, from, uh, I do this now symbolically for all listeners everywhere. Personally, I wish you a Merry Christmas. Same to you, Mr. Shepard. Thank you very much, Mr. Listener, and you're a splendid person. <laughs> Thank you. Now, wasn't that a nice little ceremony? I've already done the break. You just haven't heard it. You want me to do it again? Oh, I don't care. This is W.R. New York. I'll do another one. W.R. New York. <laughs> W.O.R. New York. Oh, W.O.R. W.O.R. The big old Santa Claus uh, on 710. Yo, ho, ho. And a ring a ding ding. Ho, 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 ho. With a bag of goodies. Ho, 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 ho. We are W O O R R. No, ho, 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 Fun City, New York. Hey, did you get that, baby? Okay. Bitty, bitty good. Now, uh, we have one more commercial. Well, we have two more, so we have one more. One more commercial. Do you have uh, the, the little shoe town niggling? Hit it, Edward. Now, the continuing adventure oh, of shoe town's exciting. own super shoes. Super shoe. We'll return to the exciting case of the gang that stole Santa. <laughs> there he is, super shoe, right down there. Great Scott, super shoe. Oh, I told you, super shoe would find you. Hey, come back here, you coward. Come on, boss, run. Hey, what's super shoe doing? <laughs> Good shot, Super Shoe. What was in those boxes? Over 25,000 pair of first quality, famous brand shoes from the best known manufacturers mm. in America and abroad. And all of them He's are priced out of character. the prices you used to pay mm. for the exact same shoes. Well, that's saying something. You tell him, Santa. Thank you, Santa. That was just so exciting. We are very, very grateful that you did that little drama for us. Man, right now, Two towns in New York and New Jersey, except Ocean and Mercer counties, have famous stretch totes for just three forty-nine. Stretch totes, and uh, they're uh, they're slightly irregular, but the imperfections are so small that you will never find them. They're only three forty-nine. They regularly sell for six bananas. Shoe Town, the division of Feldsway Corporation. Yeah, it's very good. Gee, that was I feel cleansed now, having uh, said uh, Merry Christmas to the symbolic listener out there. And he accepted it well. Did you hear him, man? Stood right up there, pulled in his gut, walked right up to the field coil. Looked right in there. Voice coil, excuse me. Oh, deck the halls with floss. Now, uh, Ed, we have something uh, very special to do here tonight. This is part of our vast uh, Christmas public service programming. And uh, it is this, a last-minute shopping hint. Uh, it's uh, getting right down to the wire. Last-minute shopping hints. And for those of you out there, you know, for a long time now, uh, for at least two or three weeks, our shopping hints have been for people of moderate means who uh, walk through life, uh, you know, scrubbing and scrabbling for a buck here and there, and they're barely making it work. But then there's the other people. Very rarely are uh, Christmas hints given for those who are on the other end of the scale, and they have a tough time buying Christmas time. I'm speaking of the very wealthy, the affluent, the truly affluent among us. I'm sure that some of you are in that category. And they have a difficult time because... All of their friends are, of course, in the same boat. They have plenty of cabbage. And it's not easy to find something for a friend who has everything, plus everything, plus, again, everything, everything. So tonight, as part of our vast public service programming, we bring you two helpful hints, last-minute shopping suggestions for the truly affluent. Ed, uh, would you please give me a little Mozart to accompany this, please? 
and Mozart somehow fits Christmas so well. And uh, this particular recording of Mozart, which I usually play at holiday time for my own enjoyment, my own edification, is a recording of my Aunt Clara, a magnificent slide whistle player. From the time she was a small child, my Aunt Clara used to sit in front of the radio and play along with the New York Philharmonic, the Chicago Symphony, and anything else she could find on the radio, including the Hoosier Hotshots. And she got particularly good at Mozart in their later days of her career. This was recorded by my Uncle Charles on a number 12D Sears Robot tape recorder. That's the one with the push-button carbon mic. He's doing that. God, she's doing that. That's the arpeggio there. And now, here is a handy hint for the truly affluent. Uh, this, uh, I suspect, might uh, answer the question that many of you have been asking. What shall I give her? Number 12A in the catalog, this natural ranch-raised crown Russian sable in the fabulous 33-inch tape model is quite possibly the finest natural sable in existence anywhere in the world, certainly the finest we have seen in our 83 years in trade. From our 1972 natural sable collection, which we genuinely believe is the largest in the world, this magnificent tape sells for a mere $42,000. As to have it flown to you at office or home for your personal inspection, just call the Neiman Marcus store nearest you. $42,000, of course, does not include the sales tax. However, Neiman Marcus does give green stamps with all of its purchases. And now for that little soup sub, the, un the undoubtedly most original gift of the year for those of your friends who not only have everything but I damn well nearly... Did you miss your deadline to renew your Medicaid coverage? You can still send your completed annual review form to Healthy Connections Medicaid. You may be assigned to another health plan, but you can ask to come back to First Choice within 60 days of renewed Medicaid eligibility. It's your family. It's your choice. First Choice is the right choice. Renew and choose us. Visit selecthealthofsc.com slash renew to learn more. Totally in love with themselves. The most personal present possible. You. Give your friends you this year. A marvelous gift. Full dimensional, life-size, reasonable sculptured facsimiles of you or your favorite other person with their permission. Our constantly affable sculptured companions are programmed to laugh as long as you like at your jokes or say yes in any language you choose at the touch of a remote control button. You might let them take your place at long meetings or dull parties or simply to keep your spouse company in your absence. If a light portable replica should begin to sound less enthusiastic, plug in the accompanying cord to give it a real charge and re-record your wonderful little beau maws, the little jokes that you like to tell around the fireside. Please specify whether you'd like a seated or a standing you. For full details, call the following number. The price, exclusive of fashion, shown in the models in the picture. And, incidentally, the sculpture's airfare to the place where the sculpture will be done is a flat $3,000, including extra tapes. Hold it there, Ed. That was very good. And by the way, we have a note. This Reggie Duncan says Merry Christmas to all the listeners. A little kid called in says Reggie Duncan says Merry Christmas. Alfie, too. Also, David Sola. And a couple of other guys out there. <laughs> well, it's Christmas time with that. You know, I, I kind of like the idea, though, of, 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 I think, since we're living in the age now, you agree, don't you, Ed, that we're living in the days of the total ego? Wouldn't you admit that, that most people's most profound love affair is with themselves in this year? I, I, I think that's a fact. I mean, uh, uh, and, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm making no value judgment. I'm merely pointing it out for a future generation, for posterity when they hear this tape. But this is the way it is now may not be the way it is in the year 2300, but now, this year, it is a fact. And I can't imagine a more genuine expression of your total ego than to give a life-size model of yourself to one of your friends. 
There it is. I'm not kidding. It's a life-size model of you. Can you imagine that? It's really grotesque. And they're really serious. See it, Ed? Can you see it there? There's a, that's a family group, apparently. <laughs> and and uh, it, you, it, underneath the picture of it, it's just an elegant group of these, these artificial people all sitting around a fireplace and uh, two women and two men. And, uh, yeah, they're looking very elegant. They're all dressed to the nines. Yeah, well, it's kind of nice. Uh, you like the fashions they're dressed in? They're dressed uh, in true Neiman Marcus style. All of them are. And uh, you can get yourself dressed the following way. His outfit, of course, you can dress them any way you want. You know, you can put them, you know, put, them, put one of your old suits on it, I suppose, or one of your old crummy-looking shirts. But, and that, that would be the real you, of course. But if you want to present your best foot, you know, forward, his outfit, cotton velvet checked, Jacket in green or black, plaid slacks, green or red tartan. His vest uh, reverses from velvet to tartan. The size is 38 to 46 regular, 40 to 46 long. Uh, that comes at $150 extra, of course, from the men's store. Her outfit by Gregory. Chiffon polyester blouse, white or pink, size 8 to 16. Nylon and acetate crepe finish pants in wine or black, $33.00. Accessories not included in the price of three thousand. That means belts, little incidentals like jockey shorts and all that sort of thing. Now the uh, the thing I like about it, of course, is it uh, it it has a tape in it that plays uh, uh, comments that you yourself have made, your own voice, and uh, it's three grand. And I'm not kidding you. You can order this through the 1972 Neiman Marcus catalog, and they'll fly a sculptor right to your house. Of course, if you pay the airfare. <laughs> Here it is. <laughs> this is going into my vast pile of trivia. And I, I hope this has helped some of you out there in your suggestions. You know, the various suggestions that you may need helped you over your Christmas. Uh, I don't know whether you can get this thing sculpted up in time for Sunday night. Or, you know, maybe a quick job. You know, maybe have yourself cast in bronze. But uh, I, I kind of like the egotistical quality of that. It's kind of great, I, I personally. I, uh, I have, you know, I have good feelings. But I think, I think any any uh, species that has such a high degree of respect for itself, if not downright adulation, uh, cannot help but persist. It will continue, uh, just out of sheer cussedness. It will continue. In fact, uh, you know, you can't, you can't imagine a, a, a hippopotamus uh, falling in love with his own image, and the funny. One day, the hippopotamus is found down on the river bank. They're working over a big mound of mud. And another hippopotamus standing off to one side in the reed says, what's, what's the Clarence doing? And he's talking to a thinner sort of hippopotamus, a worried-looking one. He says, what's Clarence doing over there? You know what I'm saying? He's working there. He's making a statue. He's making a statue? A statue? Yeah. He's uh, making a statue of a hippopotamus. Well, it was the first hippopotamus <laughs> that became conscious of the <laughs> of hippopotamusness. <laughs> oh well, you know what's a, it's a kind of a it would be a turning point in the hippopotamus world. It would, and I suspect that that was the turning point in man's world. Uh, that the man at one time, you know, was just down there with the rest of the animals. It's hard to believe, but there was a time when he used to, you know grab around with the with the weasels and the mice and the giraffes and all the rest of them, you know, for a square meal. He And he was no better and no worse than the rest. And sometimes he won, sometimes he lost. And like all the other animals in the animal world, he from time to time provided a fair meal for another animal. When he in turn, man, would eat, uh, you know, just give and take. You know how it is in nature. The strong always devoured the weak. And that man was not particularly strong. So he was quite often devoured. So he had to uh, to survive and become uh, the first guy to step on the moon and the first guy to invent uh, polyester stretch pants. He had to uh, he had to get crafty, which is what he did. And uh, all all the while, though, he was not aware of being man. You know the, the word man. In fact, you you it's hard to conceive of the fact, but it is quite true that a squirrel does not know he is a squirrel. He has not even a word like that squirrel in his vocabulary. Only man. Well, oh, Jerry Cochran wishes us a Merry Christmas. Kirk McAlhern, too. Stephen, Reggie's brother, Duncan, says Merry, Merry Christmas. Also, Billy Murphy. 
and Conway Tweedy says Merry Christmas to his pals, Chester and Thurber, and to all kids everywhere. <laughs> By the way, they said kids have a natural affinity for guinea pigs. Do you agree with that, Nick? Vice, and vice versa, natural affinity. And Conway Tweedy passes along Merry Christmas to his pals Chester and Thurber, who are two guinea pigs. So Thurber's a bit bow-legged, but outside of that, it's not a bad guinea pig. And to all kids, wherever they might be. And that's kind of great. I like that. Anybody else out there want to wish Merry Christmas to the world in general? We're ready. Anybody else uh, got a guinea pig that would like to say Merry Christmas? Hey, has anybody got a guinea pig out there? Right there, right by the phone. Get get your guinea pig to the phone, and we would like to hear your guinea pig uh, squeal his Merry Christmas. Lee is a great guinea pig imitation. Would you give us a... Listen, listen to Lee's guinea pig. Watch this. Come on. Wait a minute. Okay. Do that again, please. Very good. <laughs> hey, what's the other sound that guinea pigs make? Oh, all right. It's kind of a nutty show here tonight. You don't mind. No, no, this isn't... Uh, this is not exactly the uh, Eric Severide show, but uh, we may be getting close to the truth than Severide ever did, ever does. Uh-oh, we're just getting another message. Uh, please, Lee, what is it, another message coming in? Great. Uh, well, you know, this this whole idea of uh, presenting your friends with yourself. <laughs> Can't you imagine everybody sitting around a Christmas tree, see? There's that great big package over there. And it's six foot two. You know, it's a tremendous package. <laughs> and everybody's singing, you know, deck the halls with Boston Charlie. Time to open the presents. Hooray! And everybody starts ripping the presents, you know. And the usual presents, they get all, you know, the average stuff, the plastic handled imitation elk's tooth, the uh, automatic electric knife and all that jazz. And everybody's yipping and hollering. And finally, Sheila decides she's going to open her big package, the one that's over there by the... Christmas tree. She said, I wonder what's in this. And uh, John says, uh, well, just nothing. I just, well, nothing. I just uh, kind of thought it, kind of thought you'd like it, Jim, was, um, you know, it's not much. <laughs> no. She said, oh, well, it's so exciting. It's big. It's really big. Why, it looks like, I can't tell what that is under that paper. Why, why, for heaven's sake, that might be a stuffed gorilla. It's fantastic. What's the size of it? <laughs> well, it's nothing, really. Uh, well, look at it. It's as tall as you. Well, I had a lot of trouble getting it over here. I had to stick in the back of the car, but uh, I thought you'd like it. And it... He's tearing the paper out, see? He's tearing it up. All of a sudden, just... Ah! Ooh! 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 It's alive! <laughs> and then he reaches him and touches the button, and the thing goes, Hello, Sheila. Hello, Sheila. Hello, Sheila. Boy, are you a gas, Sheila. Hello, Sheila. Hello, Sheila. Hello, Sheila. Hello, Sheila. <laughs> oh, my God, what is it? Just, well, can't you tell? It's, it's, it's me. It's me. Now you'll never have to be without me, you know, Sheila. I'll be here all the time. You just stand me over there next to the bar there on the other side of the settee and just turn me on and <laughs> I'll say hello to you anytime you want. But we can put another tape in it if you want. It's really nothing, but I just thought you'd like it. <laughs> it's me, you know. Me. <laughs> it's kind of pretty, isn't it? It pretty is. <laughs> nice chin I got. Eh? No, it's a nice chin. Play that, please. Let's sing it out there. No. Thank you. Thank you, Edward. That was that was very touching. Deck the halls with Boston Charlie. Do, 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 do. Oh, yes, uh, David Robertson. David Robertson says Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to the world. And so does Lonnie Sachs. He says Merry Christmas. They're all belting it out out there. Thank you. They never stomp. <laughs> How are you, man? <laughs> uh, you know, sometimes you find yourself walking sideways against the heavy wind. And uh, you need a few belts to bring you out. Uh, they're, they're, uh, you know, I'll tell you a funny thing about that uh, Christmas, though. This, uh, Christmas is a tense time for most people because they all feel this is the final year. They're really going to fail. You always feel like you're really going to flop on your, you know what, and uh, you walk around. Uh, I live down the village, and you walk around down the village. Everybody's usually pretty cool in the village, you know? Yeah, you know, they walk up down 8th Street, man, they're on top of it. 
And uh, yeah, you hear the beads rattling the whole bit, and you can smell the pot blowing out of the pads down there. But what happens around Christmas time? They suddenly get real wild because they're really uptight. Because everybody's got a mother somewhere, you know, and everybody's, you know, all of a sudden, the fact that he is part of the human race has crept in and is unmistakable. And he's a little nervous about it. And you see guys who don't go into places like this from one year to the next. You know, they're wandering in there in a jewelry store. The guy's looking real nervous. He doesn't know what the hell to look at, you know. No, no it's, it's really a great sight. <laughs> oh, yeah. The only place that... Uh, the only place where you feel everybody's on top of it is in the liquor store. Oh, yeah, I was in the liquor store. Today. Nobody looked nervous. Everybody knew exactly what he wanted. Guy walks in and points over, Jim Beam, I want a quart. <laughs> gift wrap it. And you can see he was going to get the gift. You know, he, he was ready to go out there, you know, and tear that. Because when you have, when you go in and order something like that, so you, you always pretend it for somebody else. Then you run around the... You know, you run around the parking lot back there and you open it up. Just try it. I want to see it's good. You know, I don't want to give Fred any bad Jim Beam. La da da dee 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 dee. La da dee. Yeah, the, the reports are coming in. <laughs> you can't do it anymore, Lee. Okay, but you're trying. Did, hey, did we hear Did we hear from a guinea pig yet? Did you hear from any guinea pigs? Oh, we're waiting one? All right, uh, Brian O'Connor wishes a Merry Christmas to everybody out there. And Swally Wally Cauliflower, too. Chris and Art wishes us a Merry Christmas. Mushroom, a gerbil. Mushroom, a beautiful new gerbil. Well, that's the first uh, friendly gerbil I've seen. I'll tell you, one of the most nasty bites I've had in years came from a friendly gerbil. A little mean little mother just jumped up out of a cage and just grabbed my second finger there, drew blood. You don't mind if we indulge ourselves on this uh, pre-Christmas night, just play around. Ah, you know, you can't, uh, it doesn't matter one way or the other. Uh, hey, uh, I, I really do want to hear from a, uh, a guinea pig. A guinea pig, that's great. We does a tremendous... Co- you know that guinea pigs have an entire language. And uh, once you get to, to know the guinea pig well... Hey, by the way, did you know that the guinea pig is becoming one of the one of the hottest pets in the business? I didn't know. You know, it's, it's kind of surprising. I didn't know that. Everybody's uh, going for guinea pigs all of a sudden. Did you ever have one, Ed? Ever have a guinea pig? Hmm. Well, a white man. Oh, you know, uh, you ever have a white man, uh, a mouse or a rat? Any one of those? Yeah, they're pretty good. Yeah, they they get pretty friendly. But there's something completely. Uh, completely asinine about a guinea pig once you get to know them. They're, they're, they're strange animals, and they have a almost human personality. First of all, they're insatiably greedy, which, of course, is a human characteristic. Uh, all other animals know when to stop, but not the guinea pig. The guinea pig will eat himself into insensibility, roll over on his side, and, and, and continue eating as he lays on his side. <laughs> uh, another thing, too, that the guinea pig has a a little trick of doing uh, is the guinea pig stands up on his hind legs and grabs the bars of his cage and rattles them and looks out at you with tears coming out of his eyes. And that is really a bad scene. I mean, you know, that would get Ebenezer Stooge right where he lives, you know, and he stays rattle us, oh, you know. But they, they, they shake the bars. Hello, Lee there. Did you, did you hear from a guinea pig yet? Yeah, yep. Order coming in like mad. Guinea pigs are squealing all over. <laughs> You know, it's funny about about this. Uh, I, I predict, I predict, firmly predict, uh, that uh, by 1980, uh, it's only 72 now, by 1980, uh, what people give to each other will have undergone a, almost a complete transformation. And I think that this uh, foot in the door that the, the Neiman Marcus people have, have, uh, have already uh, broken the seal on the ego, uh, you know, for a long time, man was held down by uh, by all kinds of Victorian mores. You know, the the business of being humble and humility and all that stuff. That's all gone by the boards. And uh, I think by 1980, the uh, gifts will be generally uh, gifts that deal with your own ego. Uh, for example, uh, a handprint, your own handprint. You'll you'll go to some place and you'll put your hand in the clay, and they'll mold it in 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 either marble or bronze, depending on, you know, whether you want to go all out. And there'll be a bronze handprint of, of uh, J.M. Bullard 
And then he could say Merry Christmas for all time uh, to preserve himself. Uh, Lee, what are you doing on the phone? She's on the phone there, Stephanie. I can't even get through to her. But it's time to pass along some more Christmas greetings. She's writing them down. Almost all of these are kids that are calling. Yeah. Hello, Lee. Lee? Oh. oh. <laughs> well, tell them you can't take down the entire genesis of the family. Just, it just happens to say, Fred says hello. Not everybody. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, speaking of, of, uh, of Christmas gifts, do you ever look back um, when, you know, uh, to a time back, uh, just any time in your life, when you gave something that later you were very embarrassed about giving it? Now that you're, you know, you're grown up and, and uh, you've changed and you, your attitudes have, have matured and your taste, we presume, has deepened and richened. And you look back and you think of this, this fantastic thing that you gave somebody. You ever, you ever, you ever uh, well, I, I, uh, I think, uh, I think all of us have something like that in our head. Well, you're not, you're not giving them to me. You just seem to be talking. Tell them you can't talk to them on the phone there. <laughs> Do I have to instruct you after all these years? You can't do that? Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll better get in and see what's going on here. See what's up. Yeah, hello. Are you on the phone, Lee? All right, let's hear him again. Here goes the gerbil now. We're going to hear the guinea pig squeaking. Let's hear him. All right, get him up there by the phone. There he goes. There he goes. Okay. That's pretty good. Hey, what's his name? Huh? What's his name? Uh, Butterscotch and the Critters. Hey, aren't they great little animals? Oh, yeah, they're fantastic. <laughs> you, know, they're, you know what they're great for? What? They're great for a lot of love. Yeah, that's true. I don't think they were created from anything else. That's a great name, by the way, Butterscotch. Yeah. <laughs> okay, good luck. Hang in there, baby. Thanks. Great little guinea pigs. Here, we got another one. You got another guinea pig? Hello. Hi there. Oh, listen to those guinea pigs. Let's hear them. This is the largest, the horniest, the raunchiest guinea pig in New York City. Wait, wait, wait. Let's, 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 wait. Hold it. Hold it, baby. Wait, 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 wait. wait, wait. Can you hear me? I know. He's upstaging me. I am asking. No, you're not upstaging. You're just going on. It's now, incredible. let me talk for a minute, will you? All right. Now, get your guinea pig up there next to... Right up. Here. Listen to him. Mm -hmm. Isn't that incredible? What a great guinea pig. He's busy deck the halls. What's his name? Well, we haven't named him. He's naming us, as I told your secretary. <laughs> He's so okay. big. Thank you. Oh, Fine. Long here, rotten to the core. So long, baby. <laughs> With lucky landslots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to... Has anyone seen the bride and groom? Sorry, sorry, we're here. We were getting lucky in the limo and we lost track of time. <gasps> no, Lucky Land Casino. With cash prizes that add up quicker than a guest registry. In that case, I pronounce you lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Daily bonuses are waiting. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. It is Ryan here, and I have a question for you. What do you do when you win? Like, are you a fist pumper? A woohooer, a hand clapper, a high fiver. I kind of like the high five, but if you want to hone in on those winning moves, check out Chumba Casino. At chumbacasino.com, choose from hundreds of social casino style games for your chance to redeem serious cash prizes. There are new game releases weekly, plus free daily bonuses. So don't wait. Start having the most fun ever at chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. DTW, avoid, we're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions 18 plus.